very much. Uh, our next speaker um, is going to be Dr. Larry Schulman. Dr. Schulman is the Chief Medical Officer and Senior Vice President of Medical Affairs and the Chief of the Division of General Oncology within the Department of Medical Oncology at Dana-Farber Institute. And his uh, topic for presentation is Academic Partnerships to Improve Cancer Delivery. Uh, thank you very much, and I wanted to start by thanking Ben and Eduardo for not only asking me to speak this morning, but more importantly for having me to the entire three days where I've learned an incredible amount from all of you, and I'm very, very appreciative. What Ben asked me to talk about was a partnership that we have between the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute and a group called Partners in Health, which is run by a man named Paul Farmers, an old friend, along with the Brigham and Women's Hospital and Harvard Medical School. Um, now, you've just heard from Muhammad about uh, Jordan and um, the wonderful work that they've done there, and they have. And one of our visionaries from Jordan is Princess Dina Mered, uh, who said that, I've often said that the fight against cancer is too great a burden to be the responsibility of any one organization or individual. Likewise, cancer control is too big of a challenge to be tackled by any one area of expertise. Cancer survivors cannot wage the war alone, and neither can doctors, researchers, or NGOs. We must come together to achieve our goals. Our diverse backgrounds bring special things to the table, and it actually is exactly what best equipped us to get the job done. And so it's this whole idea of bringing partnerships together that has um, really forged uh, our work. Uh, Dana-Farber, as you know, is an uh, academic cancer center in Boston, or maybe some of you don't know. Uh, but this is our mission statement, and this is not a new mission statement. It's an old one. Uh, but the bottom part of it says that we design programs that promote public health, particularly among high-risk and underserved populations, and disseminate innovative patient therapies and scientific discoveries to our target community across the United States and throughout the world. And I think what we used to think about when we wrote that was that we would do nice things in Boston and that that knowledge would then get transferred by somebody else to the rest of the world, but it wasn't our responsibility to get on an airplane and get out of Boston and try to bring any of that to any other place in the world. And we now take this more literally, um, and that's been one of the driving forces to uh, partner with uh, uh, groups. So why um, a partnership between us and Partners in Health? Well, Partners in Health, which you may or may not know about, uh, is an organization that has existed since the mid-1980s, uh, started in Haiti by Paul Farmer, and has sites in many parts of the world. Uh, and I would argue that they've been incredibly successful at developing solid healthcare infrastructures in the most needy areas in the world, Haiti, Malawi, and Rwanda, are the three areas that uh, we have primarily worked with them in. Uh, and they have sites in other parts of the world, including Mexico, Peru, um, and elsewhere. Uh, but they've learned, I think, how to provide excellent care, initially focused around infectious disease, uh, engage the population, measure their outcomes, and in fact show that they've been able to um, have outcomes that warranted their efforts. Uh, and there's lots of data that they published, uh, particularly in HIV and TB. Uh, but they don't know anything about cancer, not much about cancer, and the Dana-Farber does know something about cancer, I think. And so bringing us together uh, seemed like a good idea. Um, there are lots of other partnerships, though, that are involved, um, and I don't want you to think that we're just off on our own. Uh, the Lance Armstrong Foundation has been extraordinarily supportive of this work, as has the Clinton Global Initiative um, and a Harvard-based uh, global task force. Uh, we're very, very happy to be here with you people as well. Um, and these partnerships have taken lots of different forms, but again, I think they've all been key in us uh, beginning to get the results that we're getting. Now, when I try to think about how to do cancer work in these areas, I've thought about things oversimplistically, if you will, at three different levels. There's the global work, working with governments and working with uh, international organizations, such as this organization, to try to crystallize the issues and figure out ways forward. Um, there are the health systems um, efforts, and that's what I've been involved in primarily 
with the Partners in Health Group on the ground developing care delivery systems that are effective, um, sometimes in partnership with Ministries of Health and frankly sometimes not in partnerships with Ministries of Health. And if you take Haiti as an example where uh, the Partners in Health site has been open since the 80s, the government has changed radically multiple times over that period of time uh, from democracy to military rule and so on. The Ministers of Health, as was mentioned uh, over the last couple of days, have frequently had a short half-life. Uh, but in spite of that, this center has continued to provide excellent care for a very long period of time. And in fact, when the earthquake struck on January 12th, uh, they were there within hours uh, in Port-au-Prince and eventually were named by the government and by the UN to coordinate all health care in the wake of that earthquake. And then we never forget that, in fact, at the end of all of this is a patient who has cancer and somebody we're trying to impact in that regard. Um, so this is sort of my diagram on how we view all of um, the cancer world. We've talked a lot about this over the last three days, and I'm not going to dwell on it, other than to say that we take into account uh, all of these areas in the work that we do. So we don't concentrate in just treatment or palliative care, as we just heard, or survivorship, but we look at everything that's up on this slide and try to do the best we can. And we don't think one uh, effort is uh, exclusive of other efforts. So how have we done this? And we've been doing this now for several years. Um, most of the medications that we use uh, are not available in the sites uh, that we're using them in. Uh, and Dana-Farber has been uh, good enough to donate uh, the critical drugs to these sites, not a long-term scalable solution, but it's allowed us to begin to develop the infrastructure to provide cancer care. Um, we have a group of Dana-Farber physicians who are available 24-7 as expert consults for whatever disease the doctor on the ground is uh, dealing with, uh, and I think that's been a very effective um, way uh, to do this. Uh, and our sister hospital, the Brigham Women's Hospital, has processed all the pathology and special testing uh, for free as well. So um, don't try to read this because I'm going to quickly go through each one of these eight. Uh, but these are the eight guiding principles that we've used uh, to establish the cancer program uh, with partners in health. So the first one is the development of a cancer program within the context of PIH programs in a horizontal or what Julio Frank might say a ver uh, di diagonal approach rather than a vertical approach. So we're not plopping down any cancer programs outside of already established healthcare infrastructures in these locations. And uh, I would just mention here, just as an aside, because um, I don't think I said this explicitly, this program is for all cancers. This is not a breast cancer focused program, though breast cancer is obviously one of our main initiatives. Secondly, and we talked about this, I think, maybe on the first day of this meeting, um, that the development of cancer services uh, administered by physicians and nurses and other healthcare workers um, is done without on-site oncologists. There are no oncologists in the sites that we're working in, um, and they're not going to be uh, in the near future. And I would hope that we would train more and we would have a map that looked like the Uruguay map that we looked at. Uh, yesterday or the day before where they're now oncologists in every region, but that's not going to happen now and patients are still showing up every day. And we think that um, this has been a very successful endeavor and we have the data to show that we've been able to successfully treat patients and they had, those patients have good outcomes and we're in the process of writing that up for publication. Um, I would also say that as part of this is a general task shifting uh, mentality that we have. We don't have enough even general doctors and we don't have enough nurses and we don't have enough pharmacists, but uh, community health workers have been extraordinarily valuable and talented in providing many services that those three groups